What's up guys, Gage from ARG, and we're gonna talk about something different. We're gonna talk about unhealthy cards. So as of reason, the GOAT himself, Patrick Kobanski, was the target of a conflict of interest recently in Zodiac Duelist. All because of a post where he stated that card of sanctity with the OCG effect of both players allowing to draw until they have six cards in their hand would not be unhealthy for the game if it was at three. Now as much as Patrick thought he was correct, of course there's a lot of people that went against him and said, no, nah, no. Nah. It's unhealthy for the game to have a card that powerful at three. But is having an absurdly broken card at little to no cost in the game at three actually unhealthy for the game? So for the sake of ease, let's use Card of Sanctity. If Card of Sanctity was at three with its OCG effect in the game right now, we would have a one deck format. Absolutely, no doubt about it, we would have a one deck format. That format would consist of a deck, a single deck, that could utilize Card of Sanctity the best at three. Now, assuming all degenerate FTKs like Frog FTK and Exodia don't exist in the game, it's gonna be absolutely a one deck format of a deck that can best utilize Card of Sanctity. Sure, I'll give it to you. There are a lot of decks that can use Card of Sanctity at three, but there is always going to be one deck that can utilize it best. And the way it would work is that one deck would be utilizing its insane power with Card of Sanctity, as well as utilizing it to advantage to be able to combat decks that use that same advantage with Card of Sanctity. Now, in a lot of people's minds, a one deck format is not healthy for the game. It's just, it's not. However, if we want to go off of my opinion, I think one deck formats are the most skilled formats for a very specific reason. From what its title entails, a one deck format is essentially a format where one deck dominates all other decks. So, if you were to play in a one deck format, you're playing against mirror matches the entire way. And in deck building, normally you're building your main deck to work against that top tier deck while simultaneously making your main deck that same very best deck. So a lot of one deck formats end up looking like cookie cutter formats. All the decks look the exact same because they just work the best. So where does an unhealthy card like Card of Sanctity or Soul Charge come into play here? Statistically speaking, if we had access to a card like Card of Sanctity or a card like Soul Charge at three again, the amount of board possession I can put forth can easily be countered by my opponent next turn. Because if we have a huge power cost card like this at three, the probability of myself drawing the card is just around the same as the probability of my opponent drawing Card of Sanctity. Also speaking that the probability of myself being able to go all out with Card of Sanctity is pretty much the exact same as my opponent's probability of stopping it. The point at which skillful interactions occur is, of course, I have this huge abundant amount of resources coming to hand, but of course I have to utilize them correctly to work against the potential of my opponent being able to stop it or get around it. If OTKs end up becoming a huge part of that format, three Swift Scarecrow, three three Battlefinder might hit the main deck, so I need to be wary about that and not just keep going all in and trying to jab for game. Taking in knowledge of what a cookie cutter format is, you can pretty much make the assumption that your opponent play is playing a similar deck to yours. Again, you just can't keep going in with all these summons and massive attacks and hope to win the game. You have to play skillfully to be wary of these cards that your opponent has to counter you. Who says your opponent can't do the exact same thing to you next turn? Because now your opponent's goal is to simultaneously demolish your board as well as creating and establishing a board that is hard for you to get around. It's a lot more difficult of a process than just the simple mindset of summon, 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 attack, attack, attack. OTK. Because what good is it having access to all these resources when you can't play them correctly and you just get outplayed by your opponent? While this format isn't exactly a single deck format, there is a deck that pretty much embodies all of these different aspects of skill. That deck is Necroz. As much as people want to argue, Necroz is not a helmet based deck. There are so many plays in Necroz's disposal that it's hard to pick the correct one. We hear it all the time, and if you haven't heard it yet, you're hearing from him now. Necroz is literally one of the most consistent decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. They have so many plays and so many ways to accomplish those plays at all times. It's all about what cards is the best to play at the right times, because you pretty much constantly have access to them with the amount of tutors you have. It takes a lot of thought and consideration of what resources my opponent has and normally what resources they have to access, because if we're playing the mirror match, they pretty much have access to anything. It takes a lot of thought to consider exactly what the best route of a play is to combat that. So managing and utilizing all these resources you can get with Card of Sanctity or with all the advantage you can get off of a Soul Charge is very important. Normally I consider skillful plays to happen when your opponent has to counter something you've put out. Because obviously there could be just a simple answer, a simple plain answer in front of you, but you have to determine is that the most optimal way to get around it. And since you have so many cards and resources at your disposal, you obviously have a lot more plays than you would imagine to get around it. And so you have to figure out which one is most beneficial 
beneficial to you in the end game. Now saying all this, someone is going to argue that luck is a huge factor in these types of unhealthy cards. And that's indisputable. Luck is an undefinable factor in any draw. An example I can use for this is the Powerball or the lottery. I could argue till I'm blue in the face at someone that you have literally like a fraction of a percent of actually winning the Powerball. So it's not worth investing in a ticket. But you're always gonna have that one person that thinks there's just enough luck to win. It's all about luck, they say. Which is absolutely true, 100%. But when I see it, I see statistics are always more important than luck. Yeah, I get it. You're going to have that 90% chance of drawing a really, really good card. And you're going to have that 10% chance of drawing a really bad card. And somehow, by some stroke of luck, you're going to draw that bad card. It happens. But with the amount of resources at your disposal and the amount of cards to counter these big boards that your opponent can put out, it's pretty safe to argue that, you know, that's okay. Again, it's indisputable that luck plays some sort of a factor when playing the game. But when it comes down to it, statistics pretty much trumps all. But when it comes down to it, are these huge powerhouse cards absolutely unhealthy for the game at multiple amounts? No. Absolutely, it can create a skill-based format. Fighting against the same deck over and over again, but built the same exact way, you're able to build a deck that counters it, and you're able to play a very skillful game. It's all about who can manage their massive amount of resources off of soul charges, off of card of sanctity is correct. Absolutely, it's unhealthy for the secondary market. You know, it's dark arm dragon all over again, but the secondary market is exactly the game. ARG stands for Afro Rocket Gorillas. It also conveniently stands for Ultra Reality Game. Looking to read articles from the top players, looking to buy and sell product, looking to attend high level events, UltraRealityGames.com. Be sure to like our Facebook fan page and subscribe to our Twitch stream if you haven't already. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Gage from ARG, signing out.